Um, welcome to MAGFest Closing Ceremonies and Feedback Panel. We're so glad to see you. Woo! I'm Josiah Tillett. I'm uh, one of MAGFest's uh, volunteer coordinators. Uh, to my left is Colette Fazard. She is our venue liaison. And on her left is Mark Mernan, uh, my roommate. And also our head of technical operations. Uh, guys. MAGFest is pretty much, look at my watch, over. Woo! <laughs> sorry that maybe... You see, you don't work this event. I was about to say, yeah, sorry that it might be only us that's happy about that. Yeah. You see, closing ceremonies is just in case uh, you go to, like, anime cons on the regular. Closing ceremonies are usually very prestigious and a lot of junk and blah, 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 blah. Uh, this time for us, because all of the important people are working, uh, we are the people who care about the feedback. Uh, so we are here for the feedback. We're going to brush through closing ceremonies, and that's just the MAGFest way. So if you're expecting something like prestigious or cool, that's totally fine, but we are, we are here for your feedback. Um, you might even notice, if you are at opening ceremonies, that I'm reusing the same PowerPoint. <laughs> because I didn't have time to put together a closing ceremonies one. So we're just going to run through this. Uh, we're going to go over some cool facts and figures, and we're going to ask you guys how, how, how good of a time you had. Um, and if you're very good, I might have some lanyards for you that uh, are branded from our Donkey Kong year. Yeah. Who wants one right now? Yeet! <laughs> All right. So without any further ado, let's get underway. Welcome. <laughs> We're so glad to see you. Uh, MAGFest 2023, this is our 20th MAGFest, our 20th uh, event in our 21 years of operation. Note those numbers are different because we had to cancel 21. Uh, we were back here from the 5th to the 8th, and we definitely did three and a half full days of music, gaming, and wasting the night away. Do you guys have a good time? Whoa! Coming off of last year, coming out of that pandemic, I, I think the way I put it was we did 2022 85% of a MAGFest with 50% of the staff. This year, I can confidently say, was 100% of a MAGFest with 100% of the staff. And I am so glad that we are back in a way that really feels like a full swing, knocked it out of the park kind of way. Um, and that's up to you guys. We, we had so many more people here this year. Um, it felt full. I couldn't get places. Nando's was lines out the door for all of Friday and Saturday. I was, I was thrilled. Um, they actually shut down online ordering on Friday. It made me sad. Um, but yeah, uh, if you didn't know what MAGFest was, we're an event. We had one. Uh, we're also a 501c3 nonprofit uh, that puts on video game events throughout the year. We have uh, this event, Mag Super. We have Mag West out on the West Coast, and we have Mag Stock. You guys can feel free to cut in whenever you'd like. I'm just going to keep talking until one of you do, um, if you want to like add anything. Um, we have uh, we do smaller events like music festivals and such throughout the year, and. Uh, yeah, it's great. Our, our, our goal is to make the world a better place through video games. That is our mission. Um, and we achieve that uh, on a 99% volunteer force. Um, we have six members of a paid office, um, some of them part-time, some of them full-time. Um, but then every other person that you see at a MAGFest event wearing that staff shirt, wearing that volunteer ribbon, uh, wearing any of these uh, fancy lanyards or fancy red shirts, uh, those are all volunteers. Um, and they are here because they are passionate members of that community, just like you are. Um, how many of you, was this your first MAGFest? Yay! All right. Keep your hands up of that original group if you enjoyed your first MAGFest. I don't think I saw a single, well, wait, you fucker in the back. <laughs> Put your hand back up. All right, good. <laughs> how many of this, what for you, was your second MAGFest? Your third MAGFest? Your fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. 
sorry, that's me. Ninth? Tenth. How many of you did like numbers 11 through 20? How many of you were at the first MAGFest 21 years ago? Not a single one. They're all dead because it was 21 years ago. <laughs> it was a long time ago. I was a baby. So we had some experiences this weekend, and I, at opening ceremonies, gave you some rules to enjoy MAGFest by. So I want to ask you guys if you did these 10 rules of MAGFest. Rule number one, did you go listen to some music? Yeah. How about that 8-bit big band show? That was phenomenal. We packed, I, <laughs> we packed like 3,800 people into our concert hall. We yeah. Almost fire capacity, I believe. Yes. The, uh, we've hit capacity in that room a few times. That was one of the largest crowds we've ever had for a single show. And it was super, super cool to have Grammy award-winning artists at a MAGFest event. Button Masher, Charlie Rosen, they, I don't know if you know, they won a Grammy last year for uh, Meta Knight's Revenge. And then they played it at our event. That is like super cool. How many of you guys saw Cybertronic's uh, Spree? Cybertronic Punk? The, the Transformers Cybertronic, band. Yes, yeah, Cybertronic Spree. Cybertronic Spree. I had never heard of them before this MAGFest. And then they sang the Transformers movie theme by Lion. And I was like, okay, I'm sold. And then they did Hades. And I was also sold. Uh, rule number two. Just rolling right along. How many of you guys played some games at this MAGFest? <laughs> Woo! We wouldn't be a MAGFest without some games. We had our tabletop games out there in the, uh, the Riverside Ballroom. We had our role-playing games, tabletop stuff, and uh, card games up in the National Harbor. We had our PC ga uh, land games. We had our VR zone off to the side of that. We had our full-time arcade, our full-time consoles room, all back in 24-hour operation this year, which was a real big lift. So let's give them a round of applause. Yes, you can go play that one arcade game at 5 a.m. this year. And then we had, I, I mean, God, there's so many more games. Uh, LARP? Yeah. Zombies. We had LARPs. Zombies? Zombies. Zombie tag? Uh, am I forgetting something? Call it out. I did say VR. VR, zone, VR chat. You gotta was listen. Awesome. There's a you're you're taking pictures of me. Pokemon Snap. Where was that? ARG LARP. Okay, cool. So all the LARPs and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Awesome games. Awesome time. Panels that had games. All right, I'm liking it. But you see, you gotta hold on to that one because you're already getting ahead of me. Rule number three: Go watch some panels. How many of you guys want to go see any of our amazing content at this Magfest event? The real crazy stuff comes out at night, I gotta say. But we also had some really phenomenal guests that were doing panels. We had our educational content that was back again this year. Uh, if you really had a really good panel you enjoyed, just call it out right now. 3D modeling. 3D modeling. All right, you guys all heard those, right? Awesome. All right, how many of you for your first year here did you learn this sound? Oh! Great. Now, don't do it in the atrium at night. <laughs> People are trying to sleep. Uh, and just to clarify, that is the Colossus Roar. It is not related to Goku or any anime property. Just in case you're new, don't know about the arcade machine, Colossus Roar. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> well, you see, it's completely different. Goku just monotone. So this, right. is, a, this is like a step up. You've got to sing. You gotta sing when you scream. Like that. There you go, it's a rising tone. And while you were doing those Colossus Roars, I hope you guys made some friends. Did anyone guys meet anyone cool here at this MAGFest event? I had a conversation with some folks in the uh, elevator while I was trying to get down and then it got stuck and uh, it was fine, yeah. You guys, Everyone here at this MAGFest event, we're all here for the same purpose. We love music, we love video games, we love tabletop games, we love everything relating to gaming. We want to hang out and have some fun. So, I hope you guys made some friends because we all got some shared passions and it's really great. Let's give it up for Robbie Benson, walking back here, Super Soul Bros, Guabs, let's go. If you enjoyed their show and his Guabs panel, which I believe was last night. Yeah, I'm getting my TV gun from back here. Yeah, oh, yeah TV that. gun. Anyway, let's harass him when he comes back out. Um, 
which is against code of conduct, so don't actually do that. But we'll yell at them. That's not harassment. <laughs> That's a lie. Uh, how, okay, rule number six. While you were making your friends, while you were doing your Colossus Wars, how many of you guys stayed up late? Yeah. MAGFest is a 24-hour gaming convention. Can you read that? That is 24 hours. So if you are not doing something every 24 hours of the day, you are failing at life. I don't care about sleep. I care about MAGFest. Woo! That's a lie. I slept six hours every night. Overslept for some meetings that were really important. Overslept for the start of the charity auction. It was all fun. Um, but I hope you guys found some really great content late at night. Wow, that is a toilet paper gun. No, not, not today. Thank you. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow. Although I've been eating beans all week, so that might come in handy. <laughs> no, we're good. All right. Yeah, thank you so much. Everyone give it up one more time. Robbie Benson, Gwobs. All right. Now, similarly, a man just walked behind stage and walked back out with a leaf blower and a toilet paper roll attached. Um, that was a fairly unbelievable story. I hope you guys found some unbelievable stories. I'm great at transitions. Um, how many of you guys found an unbelievable story? Did you guys see the pickup brass band that was playing out in the gazebo last night? And they just opened with Megalovania. And that was fucking awesome. <laughs> how many of you guys saw the, uh, the Minecraft villagers that were just like walking around like the entire event? I've got pictures. I didn't get an emerald. That's, that's awesome. You know what? You can also have a lanyard, too. Yeet! You'll have to get that. Thank you. Madden 17. Whoop, whoop. At the charity auction. Yeah, that's some really unbelievable stories. Uh, charity auctions always, like, uncontrollable every year. Um, how many of you guys saw the, like, the goose, pro goose game protest? All right. How many of you were a part of that? <laughs> Sit down, please. All right. How many of you guys saw any of the amazing other things that were going on this weekend? Like, I don't know, all the cosplay photo shoots, all of the other things that were just kind of happening in the halls. That's where all of your unbelievable stories are going to happen. Super Soul Bros? The Soapbox? Yes, the Soapbox is awesome. And MacFest 21 Plus had a panel there because... That's not going to get approved by our panels team. No, we had the first community orchestra. What was that? That was Saturday morning, 10 a.m. in the atrium. How many of you guys woke up to that? It was awesome. You heard Ellen McLean singing Still Alive live in person. You guys got some unbelievable stories out of this MAGFest. That was your homework assignment. I, I hope you remembered. Please walk out with one unbelievable story. Um, rule number eight, how many of you guys created the content you wanted to see? This is, it's okay if you didn't all do this. But how many of you guys saw something or wanted to do something and made it happen this weekend? Either building something in the maker space or going to go see a show that you wanted to do or popping up a, a tournament in the tabletop or somewhere? I can't hear a thing you're saying. That was, that was like Charlie Brand's parents. Oh, very first Spanish language panel. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Multilingual panels are going to be the thing of the future once we all have uh, artificial translators installed in our, our heads. Rule number nine, I hope some of you did this because I am the volunteer coordinator for MAGFest alongside Faith, who was walking around here earlier. How many of you guys volunteered and helped brought our event to other newbies? All right, let's... Go ahead and stand up. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give these folks here who volunteered at this MAGFest event a big round of applause because this event would not happen with folks like these. How many of you guys were staffing? If there's any staff in the room, let's stand up too. Uh, there's a banana man in the back waving his hand very aggressively. He misses his dog. Do you also miss, well, you also miss your bird? Oh! Guys, MAGFest would not happen without our volunteers. They are at average attendees just like you. They come here because they are passionate about this event and passionate about this community, and they want to make sure you're having a good time. So 
if you see a staff member, please go kiss them directly on the lips. Don't actually do that. But she, give, give them a high five, shake their hand, tell them how much you appreciate them. All right, I'm, I'm sure they, 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 they need some, uh, some appreciation. Uh, rule number 10, uh, this is not going to mean anything if you weren't at opening ceremonies. Uh, Daddy Daki needed a 10th rule, and he got one. Uh, that was have, always have a 10th rule. Great. Uh, I'm going to skip over some other stuff that's not relevant anymore. Uh, there's the map. There's the map. It's the map. It's the map. Uh, real talk. Okay, so if you guys remember, we had a big pandemic over the course of 2020 and uh, 2021 and 2022 and 2023, and hopefully it'll end sometime soon, but we don't ever know. Um, MAGFest had to cancel for the first time ever in Super 2021. Uh, and that was a big blow to us as a nonprofit whose primary revenue is MAGFest Super. Um, that, that's how we, we put on our events. That's how we uh, pay for our full-time office staff that helps coordinate uh, our other smaller events around the area. Um, and that was a big blow to us. And we, a few things happened. We, we got really scared financially uh, really quick in the year 2020, um, towards the end, we held our first ever MAGFest telethon. That was a single day fundraiser for MAGFest, the nonprofit. Um, and we raised over $100,000 within 10 hours. Um, that full telethon is still online on YouTube if you guys wanna go see it. Um, I get my head shaved. Uh, I have to eat a hot egg full of uh, hot sauce and then I crap my pants for the next five hours after that. Um, Bean masks were important, uh, pudding socks. Um, we did some community art lanyards. We played some Smash uh, with, with members of the community, but $100,000, that came from folks just like you. Um, and <laughs> honestly, we would not be here without people like you who made those donations. Um, we are pretty much entirely community funded. We accept some small partnerships, um, but those are, uh, like I, that would be a very small part of, um, I, I wouldn't even say our revenue, it's just right. a part of our content. They, a lot of these guys just provide content. Like our fabulous partners, Computer Upgrade King, if you were in the LAN and you played any of the free play PCs, those were all generously donated. The use of that time um, on those computers was generously donated by our partners at Computer Upgrade King. Um, if you enjoyed that, let's give it a round of applause. Um, other things such as um, the lasers in the coming concert hall, that was donated by another partner of ours, X Lasers. Um, and uh, I, I think Ethan O'Toole donated some too. He, he like dropped off some lasers. Right, he lent the controllers. We had a USB issue on the stage. Right, right, yeah. right. And we had partners all over the, the event. Um, they do not give us money. They, they give us their time. They give us the resources we need to make our event better. Um, and we were, were generous and uh, grateful for them as well. This year, though, we did have one more thing. Uh, if you signed up for your badge, uh, you might have noticed that there was the option to do a superstar donation. That was a us looking at our... Uh, I'm gonna shuffle this around and do this. Yeah, that was us uh, basically opening up donations for fi additional financial support to the community, and you guys kicked in a heck of a lot of money um, for opening up bad shields to help MAGFest kind of keep going in this time where we've had a, reduced, uh, a reduction in attendance. Um, so I want to call out these guys in particular. These big guys up here, these big names right here, you might have seen banners for them around the event. That is because they donated $1,337 to MAGFest. Um, and we want to call them out as our superstar donors. That'd be John Park, Lycan Mike, Matsudano, Penguin, Snoozy, Sox, McGox, Warchamp, and Big Nerd Lil Z. Uh, and just to be clear, a couple of those names up there, I recognize because they are volunteers. Mm -hmm. So I want to doubly thank them for giving us both time and money, which are both precious. Um, down here, these guys, they donated, I think it was like $200, $300? I'm not sure the exact total, but they did donate uh, a, an, an in, a not insubstantial amount of money, so I want to call them out as well, which would be... Uh, Adam, our swag dev, who might be here and is probably not. Shout out for swages. Who bought one or got one? Woo! Those things are amazing. And for the first time ever, we sold, a, we sold every single one we made. They, they did a fantastic job. Yeah. How many of you guys played the, like, any of the games, like the Super Smash Brothers clone? Yeah. Wireless two-player. 
Um, but Adam, uh, Getty and Dionysus, the video Get In Crew, uh, Jared, Jared G, which is Jared Gynowski, uh, Met Foreman Junkie, David Musselman, uh, Mike Magell with VR Zone. If you guys enjoyed VR, anything over by land, VR Zone, that's all put on by Mike and his team uh, with, with Jeff Baz. Um, Purple Link 33. Uh, if you guys did any video game trivia, that would have been uh, Mike uh, Purple Link 33. There was there was a video game trivia event this year. If you were there, um, uh, Ten Shipnik, uh, Tiago Summer, uh, Damasini, Damasino. I'm sorry, I butchered your name. Um, and then down here are all of our thirty dollar kick ins. You see, I remember that I had kicked in last year. This is a, this is just an anecdote, and I was like. Oh, well, I'm sure my name's on this list. So I like controlled F and typed in my name and was like, oh, not there. And I typed in my last name and I was like, oh, not there. And then I uh, received a picture for Faith's tub or can, can of lard. If you guys see that on that screen, that is me um, because Faith is our volunteer coordinator here and we love her dearly. Um, but anyway, thank you all so much for your financial support over these years. Um, MacFest has been been in a tough spot recently. Um, we, I'm confident to say that we are now in a much, much better spot moving forward, but we really do appreciate um, your financial support over these past three years. Um, it has kept us alive and it has allowed us to keep coming back stronger and stronger each year. Um, and we are so thrilled that you guys were willing to do that for us. Um, okay, so real talk up there. I've got one more thing, um, I think. Well, no. I've got uh, a few more things, just some numbers to go over. Um, Mark, do you want to tell us how many badges we sold? Uh, I wish you had told me that you wanted that specific number more than right now. Would you want to tell me any other specific numbers? Uh, sorry? How about our total uh, check-ins? Okay. The total check-ins, which is the number that I prepared, is 18,987 physical bodies on site this weekend. Guys, that is almost a 100% increase of our attendance from last year. We had 10,500 check-ins, and now we have about 9,000 more. That is insane. I guess it'd be a 90% increase, not 100%. But that is so insane. Thank you so much for coming back out this year. Um, do you have any metrics on perhaps our total sales badges sold? Uh, let's see. We go by attendee. I can use Sorry, the there are lots of numbers. It turns out with like 20,000 people in the building, it really depends how you count things. Uh, I don't know what the applicable number is. I'm sorry. I will it's look a it lot. up. It's like 16,034, I think. The, the number I'm going to use is the one that we have a, a little badge tracking bot in our Slack. Um, and that number is 17,328, um, which is a pretty substantial increase from last year. It's not quite where we were in 2020. But guys, MAGFest is back, I gotta say. We are, it, it is so, so great to have all of you guys back here. Um, when, when we held our event on what ended up being the single worst day of the pandemic, um, we, we were like really concerned. We ended up with about a 40% uh, reduction overall on our, uh, our, no, sorry, 60%. We ended up with 40% of our total attendance here on site. Um, and now we are back in a big way. This is probably about 75, 80% of where we're at. Yeah, we're currently above where we were at MAGFest 13. So yeah. we're somewhere in that era, basically. Yeah, uh, that is, would be Metroid year. Yeah. Yeah, or further beyond would be Castlevania. We're somewhere near Castlevania. Yeah, <laughs> um, so we're, we're about, you know, like a three-year growth reduction. But um, I kind of like it like that. I don't know if you guys feel like that. It was a little crowded here in 2020. Yeah. And this felt, this felt good. I still had trouble getting places, but it felt good. All right. I'm glad you guys all agree with me because you're all saying agree. 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 Good. All right. That's all the boring stuff. Um, now let's get to the fun stuff where you guys come up here and complain at us for an hour. Um, or just tell us what you liked. Uh, well, let's actually officially end this. Ladies and gentlemen, with the power invested by me, by the, uh, the, the MAGFest board of directors and the MAGFest executive director by not being here and telling me that I had to do this, it's now in my power and the power of all three of us here at this table to de declare MAGFest officially over.
<laughs> but we'll be back next year. I'm not going to do this. Again. And those dates are not now. Sometime next year. We'll tell you probably in the next couple of months. Maybe. We, <laughs> maybe. Keep your eyes on those socials and don't try to book at the hotel because they'll tell you no. Um, anyway, guys, thank you so much for being here. Um, at this point, I, I will release any of you who, who want or ha just don't have any questions or just wanted to be here for closing ceremonies. But otherwise, uh, if we can make a line up here at the front, um, we will go ahead and start taking attendee feedback questions, uh, any kind of comments. Um, but guys, thank you so much for being here one more thank time. <laughs> And quick, and quick note, uh, be sure to go pick up, if you have luggage stored over by Potomac Ballroom, please be sure to go pick it up. They've got about like 50 bags still over there. Hi, so I have two things that I seriously, three actually, that I seriously, seriously liked about this convention. So the first thing is that all, almost every signature uh, every interaction I've had. Hey, can we can we get? You, I apologize. Can you t keep it down in the back of the room because we're trying to get. Uh, we want to try to listen to the feedback we're getting. Be Thank silent. So Be silent. Thank you. Sorry about that. It's right. all good. Oh, great. So I really liked um, the interactions that um, I've had with a lot of the talent that you guys got here. And I really like that it wasn't charged for in any way. Um, you know, going to, I'm local to Jersey and going to New York Comic Con, it's a very, like, go in, go out, you know, you know, pay like 100 something. However, you know, the way that you guys have done it, I feel like a lot of the talent is not only walking around and more active, um, but I feel like, it was more like, I guess, intimate. And it felt really good to just see things happen. Um, and that was awesome. Second thing that I really liked is the uh, tournaments. The attendee run tournaments were fantastic. And I really like that you guys do this. This is my first MAGFest. So I really liked seeing that. And um, I did the uh, Pikmin 3 uh, tournament. And that was very fun and very smooth. Um, and the feedback taken from the attendants, um, because like we're big Pikmin fans, right? Um, and they were gonna do like a best two out of three, but we've run uh, tur that tournament before and we thought it would go for too long, so we switched it to single elimination like that and it went way smoother and way better. So the feedback from that was fantastic and the adaptability was unbelievable. And lastly, um, ADA accessibility was un like, Absolutely great. Um, I, I have a bone condition. It's really hard for me to stand up for long periods. Um, so for like the concerts, there's that ADA section. If there's one thing that I would have preferred um, is to maybe move the ADA section a little bit farther to the left um, and to maybe have a few more chairs uh, on that left side because it's easy to see on the side through the fences but, um, like, if you have, like, a rightmost seat in the ADA section, um, you're kind of looking at that main grouping. So it's as if you're basically sitting in the crowd. Um, right. But that's really kind of it. It's been fantastic. Uh, response has been great. And especially with a ADA response, it was so good. And whenever I needed something, they, they did it. And it was great. So I really wanted to thank you guys for such a great first MAGFest. And... Uh, that's about all I have. Thank awesome. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. If you can just hand it to the next. You can pass it back. Yeah, Sorry. Just pass it <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. All right. So this is my first one. It was pretty good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, two notes. Uh, well, a bit more of it. Whatever. Uh, so uh, with the guidebook app, I know that it's it's a third party. Nothing that you can really do about it. Uh, but the it's not very dyslexia friendly for two reasons. One, you can't mess with the font. Two, um, it tends to skip around. 
uh, when you um, you know go to select, yeah, I want to go to this event or market or whatever, it tends to go back to the top. Um, it's also not very ADHD friendly for that reason. Um, so I'd have two suggestions for that. The first would be um, please put your itinerary on your website or something like that so it can be printed out. Uh, that way it's more uh, ADHD dyslexia friendly. So it's like I have a physical thing, I can just write these things down in a way that I can read it. Um, and the second suggestion uh, would just be to um, uh, have, or, or I guess like just like talk to guidebook or something like that to be like, hey, your app is kind of shit in some ways. <laughs> but I know that that's kind of a long stretch because that's not really nothing you can do, but at least having the itinerary for the uh, events accessible in a different format on uh, website socials would be much appreciated. But that being said, all the events were lovely. The accessibility features were nice. Um, and yeah, it was, it was uh, stock full of stuff to do. So thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, yeah we... We're always looking at other options. So in particular, if you go to another event and you're like, hey, they did a really good job on this, uh, just send our feedback form and let us know, like, hey, this app actually works. Because we, we mostly see it from the internal side. And like, Guidebook has an OK API and stuff like that. So it, yeah. It's yeah. not terrible, for sure. It's just like yeah. skipping around and like, oh my god. Yep. <laughs> you know, but anyway. Yeah. Thank you. Hey. All right, first I want to say it, it, it was a really good event, uh, 11 out of 10. Uh, however, my, my sister and I had a lot of problems with the guidebook app. Uh, uh, one problem was uh, there, there were some events that would be canceled and it wouldn't show up in the app. M my, there were the panel that my sister wanted to attend, but apparently it was moved at the last minute. It didn't show up in the app, mm. so, okay. so she missed it. Time traveling panels. Uh, I, I spoke to one of the people at Makerspace regarding the canceled event. And apparently, they asked to be taken off the schedule, but for some reason, their event was duplicated. They got another copy of themselves put in the schedule, which only caused more confusion. <laughs> oh, got it. Yeah, we'll pass it on to the team. Colette's taking notes, um, and I'll, I'll also make sure that's written down. Uh, I, I believe we like batch update up, uh, updates the guidebook, so they all go in like a single batch. So it happens like, at periods throughout the time. So if a particular panelist like got canceled and that wasn't reflected in guidebook. What might have happened was oh, I that see. Th maybe they canceled immediately after batch process, and then their w their update is waiting for the next batch, and it doesn't get there in time. Yeah. Right. The um, problem I is every time we push updates in guidebooks, it resets everyone's app. Like you have to go yeah, download that, it again. That, Everyone really like, scrolls annoying. up to the top. So we yeah. like take all the really small updates and we just combine them together, mm. and it sounds like something slipped through the cracks there. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, thank you. Hi, um, best event ever. This is my eighth year of breakfast. Thank you, and especially for Kohler for taking care of the hotels. And um, I do have like a question, like, is there um, any better way in the future to establish the um, hotel bookings and everything so that everything moves like so smoothly with the cancellations and the bookings, as well as like um, make it so that like uh, each um, registered attendee is associated with one hotel booking only because like there are like people booking with like different names and such and there's like no way to track them. And also, um, second thing, I like the, um, the Zodiac thing where uh, it's the year of the rabbit and then they have a bunny meetup this year. I don't know who organized it, but I think it should be like a theme like every year in the gazebo, like some kind of like a, a small like bunny party or whatever. Next year it's gonna be the year of the dragon. So maybe like a dragon meetup. And like which, um, you know, zodiacs. <laughs> as long as the bunnies but keep them buns covered a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But overall, like, I really enjoyed my first this year. Thank you guys, especially like Courtney of the um, cosplay department. She did a very good job organizing everything, and I was there to like, you know, help and somehow like uh, organize as sure. well. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I think you you've got comments on the hotel stuff probably. Um, just as a note, we do limit one room per attendee per, uh, in the initial rush, which is essentially when the entire Gaylord okay. and National Harbor sell out. Right. So generally, the only time we may get some people picking up a second yeah. room is if they are able to pick one up after the, the rooming lists are turned over from Merritt's in mid-December. Okay. So do the badges go first or the hotels go first when it comes to uh, we um, badges are for sale before hotels, before hotels. and then you have okay. to buy your badge within a, an X amount of time right and then you get access to the sort of the early bird booking yeah. which 
is where essentially the entire Gaylord and National Harbor go. Oh yeah, yeah. I was I was being put in like let's say like a five hundred something in the queue, but then when I refreshed my page, like it was gone. <laughs> Here, uh, reach out by the contact form. Please give me your your specific details because yeah. I do want to hear oh, about we, that we, for we, sure. We have each other on like. Because like if you if you were five hundred in the queue. Then honestly, you probably if you wanted a Gaylord room, you should have been able to get one. Yeah, is there like um, a span, let's say like Wednesday to Monday or like Thursday to Sunday, or like a specific like um, duration of like the hotels are booked? A limit? Like I I apologize. Can you can you speak? Can you so increase your volume a little bit? I yeah, can't quite uh, understand. Uh, usually when um when uh, we book the hotels, is there a specific a limit of the duration from let's say like Monday to like next Monday or? Wednesday to Monday or whatever? No, we don't have it. I, I mean, generally, people will book for the three nights, essentially uh, Thursday through Sunday, okay. uh, but we don't have any particular requirement on that at this time. Okay, for you guys, like, what is the maximum duration? Say the, again? The maximum duration for the hotel when it comes to booking like, um, the venue? If I understand your question, are you asking if we want to set a, a specific duration? Duration, yeah. Um, we may consider it. Just because when, when some of the rooms got released via the Gaylord in late December, yeah. some people were grabbing for only like Friday and Saturday nights, and we were like, yeah. and uh, but like we don't, we haven't yet, and we'll make it clear if we yeah. do that. Especially like the um, Christmas and the holiday crowds, like checking out, and then other crowds checking in. I was here for New Year's too, <laughs> so I understand. Oh, okay. If you were here for New Year's, that <laughs> yeah. was a completely yeah. different right. follow up. So no worries. Thank you. I uh, just want to say, for starters, um, you've been on a great show as usual, solid as ever. Uh, this is just a small thing here in that, um, just to give you a quick rundown, I got to run a couple tournaments um, on a fly, and I'm really grateful for the uh, gaming staff to um, be so flexible and being able to put them in and put them in the schedule. Um, but I would like to have uh, been able to uh, contact them beforehand, and the only trouble was is that on the website, uh, it wasn't updated. Like last year, there was a link for 2022's um, arcade or uh, console um, uh, sign-up page, whatever, to be a tournament runner. And in general, you know, um, I find it's helpful. Like I've seen some other uh, convention sites having a master list of our, of uh, emails for general department, department uh, general. Uh, departments, uh, departments in general, yeah, they're, uh, well, they're emails, uh, contacts. So that way then if I was able to maybe get in contact with the console or arcade department, I could have been able to hash out my tournament idea earlier. But in general, yeah, that's what uh, my only suggestion. Otherwise, keep it up. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Just a little side note about Purple 30, Purple Ink 33s trivia panel. It did not happen this year. It did happen last year, though. Um, and also, I did enjoy the show. Uh, uh, it would have been great if he had a little bit more response uh, saying whether or not he was actually going to be doing the panel or not. Because mm. it, it took quite a while. as a. Okay. Uh, can you say which panel this was? Uh, he... He initially signed up to do the trivia panel like he did last year. Who who was this? Purple Link Thirty Three. Okay, got it. Yeah. Um, and he said that did not happen this year. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that was pretty much it. Okay. Uh, Can you pass it back you. then? Thank you. And keep just to help us out if you put them right like right at your mouth. Don't be shy. Just so, so we can act, so we can make sure that we can hear. Hi. Hello. Thank okay. You. So uh, this was my first MAGFest, and I went all in with volunteering. Hi, Mark. Um, and <clears throat> I had a really fun time. Uh, I actually have my own ambulance story now. Uh, I did my homework. Uh, one thing I really want to bring up and appreciate. So uh, I was a broke college student when I got my badge. Uh, so I couldn't afford the Gaylord uh, suite, hopefully next year, but, um, and there was a point in time where like I could, I like kind of like, my ankle kind of gave out and I was like, I have to go home, not home, I have to go rest. But I was still able to participate 
with the live streaming and I heard that there was like also the 51 and I think that's awesome and if you guys are able to please continue that because it really sucks to be like because there's uh, I'm kind of like I paid like whatever for four days I feel like I have to even at my health and that's not healthy but you guys also had this option to do it to participate while not being present and I feel like that's awesome and that's great and doesn't put your health at risk if that makes sense so thank you thank you awesome thank you so much hello um, this is my first MAGFest my first convention I've ever been to and Woo! Yep. And I just want to say I had a great time. Uh, I went to every single dance class, every single yoga set, loved it. Mm -hmm. Loved the after party. I think y'all did a really great job, especially as someone who, honestly, I bought my ticket two weeks ago. So, and I, someone with social anxiety and coming alone, I felt very welcoming, very glad I came, and i really glad I was able to experience this. Awesome. So keep up the great work. Yeah. Thank you. Glad to say it. How's it going? Um, so, my stuff's pretty straightforward. The first thing I want to say is um, maybe I've just missed this in the previous years, but I've actually really enjoyed the art that was uh, put out like by the front entrance, stuff like that. Yeah, I should have called that out in the closing ceremonies. Um, this year we had a, a, a built, a brand, not going to say brand newly built, but a very much expanded upon theme team full of artists that just designed all of the art, all of the assets. Um, yeah, I loved it. Yeah. Like, because it's something that makes, because I stopped going to Katsukon, you know, which is like two weeks from now. But I like seeing the Gaylord turned in turned into Magfest, rather than just Magfest being at the Gaylord. Mm. You know, I love all the signs with all the funny quips at the bottom of them. They're great, and like all the art. When I saw them putting it down, I was like, "Oh, that's so cool!" So I hope to see more of that in the future, if not just expanded upon. But I will say, the Gaylord has a new. You're gonna love this. You're gonna love this title, Director of Operational Excellence. It was like even I rolled my eyes at that one. Um, they were very excited to put up the clings on the uh, on the floor and then on the elevators, and they brought that to us like last week. So oh. we're our, so we are going to be all over getting more of that I love lined it. up for next year. I can't you wait know, and get that organized earlier. Yeah, it's it's like I said, it's like it's great seeing the Gay Lord turned into Magfest. You know, um, I like Guidebook as a probably an unpopular opinion. Um, however, the only thing I would say that I find missing from it is a lot of descriptions are usually empty, especially for like the tournaments. It's like, sign up at the consoles. It's like, <laughs> the only reason why I bring this up is because I signed up for Vampire Savior thinking it was Vampire Survivor. And I was like, oh, they're doing a tournament for Vampire Survivor. What is that? And then I, until like 10 minutes before the tournament started, and I was like, oh wait, I read that wrong. If there, if there was like some kind of description for like what something is, I don't know, a bit nitpicky probably. Yeah. Um, the, uh, also, I may be dumb, so I may miss a lot of things in general. I'm very, I'm a casual MAGFester, but I've been coming for like the past four years. I actually liked last year. <laughs> Imagine not having no weight to play a rhythm game. <laughs> um, a, somebody was bringing up hotels earlier. Is there, is may not be in your power, um, day zero hotels. Wednesday night. Say again? Wednesday night hotels. Yeah. Is, is that a thing that you can add? Yeah. Maybe I, oh, did I, just, did I just miss it? Um, I'm just, maybe I'm dumb. <laughs> no, no, no. Generally, yes. I mean, the, I mean, we have like half of the Gaylord blocked for, for Wednesday. Oh. Um, and then a lot of our other overflow hotels will also give Wednesday nights. Oh, I didn't see that when I was checking out. So, hey, so, yeah, I'm no, just yeah, Generally, because they know that people want to come in a day early and get settled. Yeah. Um, cool. I'll have to look off of that next time. Um, I did have, I guess, this, minor quips. That's all this really is, really. Um, when Family Jewels was doing his stick out in the Bevedere, it was absolutely packed. And I was like... I really wish they would have like thought such a popular person through maybe a little bit more minor quip. It was like impossible to see him for my friend who was like five foot something. He just couldn't see him. You know, he went up on the second floor by the uh, gazebo, still couldn't see nothing. Eh, minor quip, but I mean, 
maybe when it's someone that popular. I don't know. I mean, y'all are the organizers. It's just something to think about. Um, oh, I guess the big one. This is going to be a hot topic. The COVID inconsistencies. Uh, very hot topic, and people upset about that. And there's not a lot of communication from, you know, Magfest about it, because um, y'all are busy, clearly. Um, uh, one of my friends who lives here in Maryland says it's actually a lot of like government is actually mandating a lot of it. Not, although it is obviously, Magfest wants to do it as well for safety. Now I think if if it is the government, you could I just a lot of people are upset. Uh, clearly, I'm sure y'all see Facebook. Um, I'm not one of the people who are upset, but I don't like seeing people upset. I wish everyone was just enjoying things a bit more. If things were just like clear, if it is the government mostly saying coming down really hard, then if that was put out, I think that might temper people a lot, save y'all a lot of bad negativity, because I love everything. I have no problems, but when I see people upset and it's just like, Usually things have been better communicated, yeah, usually. In, in this case, it was uh, self-imposed. Okay, restrictions. that's fine. Uh, like I said, in 2022, uh, day one was was the statistically the worst day of the pandemic. Yeah. And when we're planning our policies, uh, something that's really important to us is not to change things around. Right. Uh, we've seen events that will change their COVID policies, either loosening or restricting, yeah. um, up to a week before the event. And that's really <laughs> important to us. That when we make a change, or, yeah. or that uh, when you buy your badge, you know what you're getting into, yeah. and you know what you've agreed to. So we set them stricter than we might necessarily might have needed to. Mm -hmm. um, but that's certainly something we'll, yeah. we'll discuss. I mean, a lot of people saw like inconsistencies with that. I think yeah. I, this, I hate to call that one particular panel because that's not really fair to them. But the yoga panel, this is something that just was brought up in passing, and everyone just kind of looked at each other. Like we all just were rolling around on these mats for 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. And then we just stuck the mats back in a box. Hmm. And we were all like, is anybody going to wipe these down? No? Oh, okay. <laughs> There's a chance that they might have come back and done that afterwards. Our arena team was really swamped this year, so a lot of the oh, work okay. that they had to do was like, like I, honestly, like, because of COVID, they actually lost like two or three like, cr critical staff. Oof. Um, so I will, I'll make sure that they got wiped down. But okay. there's a chance it might just not have happened like... I mean, Immediately. people just kind of looked around at each other. I don't think anyone was really upset. Everyone was just kind of like, sure. wait a minute. This is inconsistent. <laughs> <laughs> and I think inconsistency is probably the worst part about anything. And, of course, that humans. Um, that's it. Other than that, hey, I, great right. year. I preferred last year. but <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, I do want to call out real quick. Um, I did throw up on the screen there um, our feedback form, which I will try to get a, a, a less garbage URL for. Um, and then our COVID self-reporting form. If you guys do get COVID at this event, or if, you've, if a friend of yours came down with COVID and you think it's related to the event, so within the next 10 days or so, please go ahead and fill out that self-reporting form. Um, we will be putting that information online for contact tracing purposes. Hey, um, I just uh, wanted to mention, uh, yeah, like I'm, I'm from Seattle. Um, I, I almost went last year, and, uh, but yes, as you said, it was like the worst day of the pandemic. I actually unwound all of my travel plans because uh, Omicron was scary. Um, but this year I came and had a great time. I, uh, I was um, in my uh, jester costume, uh, Shaco, the red and black one. You have seen me walking around. Um, I, I got to try the soapbox and, and uh, did a panel there, and I actually might do a real panel next year because of, because of that experience. Um, and yeah, I got to try the jam and, and, the, and the concerts and the gaming, all of these things meant for a very good MAGFest. This is my first MAGFest. Um, and yeah, it was a great talk. Now, um, the main piece of feedback that I would like to give is uh, I, had some, I had some flexibility in travel plans, but it wasn't particularly obvious from the website or, um, or um, other media that Sunday's content would be truncated at like four o'clock. I was like, I, even right now on the website, it doesn't really say that. I, I, you, I've been hearing it as like a four days, 24 hours, and I kind of expected, oh, that I mean, Sunday there's content in the evening. But let, I guess now in retrospect, logistically, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, but yeah, so I couldn't really decide whether to uh, when, come in Wednesday and leave Sunday, or come Thursday, leave Monday. Um, so I'm, I'm leaving tomorrow night, but I'm not really sure what I'm up to. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's just a you know, uh, piece of feedback that I, that I had. And, um, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's why 
the, the slideshow that I had for closing ceremonies and opening ceremonies was like three and a half days because <laughs> it, it isn't quite the full, the full 24 yeah. hours. But I mean, the time the guidebook is published is probably after people maybe confirm their travel plans. So that's why, like, it might be a, a it would be nice if, it, if that were called out a little bit earlier, I don't know, at some point. Especially if somebody is a first-timer like me that's just looking at this event, like, oh, look, it's content from Thursday to Sunday. I've wanted to go to it for a while, but I'm not really sure what's up. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's pretty standard for events to close on Sunday. That's why we actually push back and have a fourth day on Thursday. Um, heard, though. We will, we'll, we'll try to make sure that that okay. gets like, better called out. Thank you. And actually, for those of us who are still here till tomorrow, and I may be on that list too, um, MagFest 21 Plus, we, there, there are already people like saying, let's get together and just do stuff, because we're yeah. all still here. So now it's the, the Mag Labs reunion of sorts. So uh, been to Mag quite a while. Uh, it's definitely not the first time. And with that, I've seen things ups and downs with all the changes, some better than others. Can you hear me? Eat the mic, yes. Thank you. Better? Uh, so with, uh, over the years, there have been a few things that I, I preferred over other years and just kind of a breakdown. So for Indie Arcade being one of them, uh, I've seen a number of issues that I've heard also from, um, uh, acquaintances and friends that are uh, putting games up there that there are delays and other issues that everything is very last minute in terms of knowing who's coming or even getting called and said, your game's in, set up now. Uh, I think in their case it was almost a week prior, if not less. So very, very last minute. Um, but also the layout, the, the, the focus of it, it feels like if there was a bit more planning, it would feel nicer. I've seen other years where it was just the, 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 uh, how do I put, it? put together better, different kind of focuses. Um, one that I adored was years ago when you had Artemis set up as the, the bridge sim right in the middle of Indie Arcade. And it was right next to the entrance. You walk in, giant screen on the back wall, mm. people playing belligerent Captain Kirks on the front with speaker systems listening to the insanity. It was very immersive and very enjoyable. And I feel like the, not necessarily having to bring that back, but if something, some kind of focus on there, that you have this overarching theme that for every year, maybe throw something smack dab in the uh, middle of the arcade room, really kind of pulls you in. And if you do it, something of that nature where it's everyone gets to participate and they get to see you kind of going wild and sit down and enjoy and be the audience as well, far more, uh, a lot more participation and a lot more engagement. And in hell, I mean, you, even after it, people are amused by the uh, shenanigans of the gameplay and what they've seen and heard afterwards, more socialization, meet new people. So I feel like there, there's something in that that uh, I think could be beneficial. Yeah. Uh, aside from that, um, once again, as you've heard many times, guidebook. Very annoying. <laughs> uh, I, I understand the, the simplicity of it. it. It's much easier to deal with, but I mean, stuff didn't get posted for it until very last minute this year. And navigating it is a pain in the butt at times. Not just on mobile, but trying to decipher which panels I want to go to, where the things are, and whatnot. I feel like even with the layouts, we indicate um, it's in the Cherry Blossom Ballroom, Potomac Ballroom, or whatever the names. The names themselves are incoherent nonsense. I would say that we should just go for a standardized zero floor, first floor, cl um, you know, whatever central, just something coordinate system, something basic, where it's like, here's, this thing's on the bottom, this thing's on the middle, top, and much easier to navigate at a glance than figuring out where the hell is the Potomac Ballroom. Yeah, we always run into the issue where when we try to give our own names to rooms, we're fighting Gaylord signage. Mm -hmm. So we try to just sort of give you both things. So it's, it's panel one, it's Cherry Blossom Ballroom. Mm -hmm. I'd be a little nervous adding a third system. Well, that's what I was saying, like, instead of that, a coordinate system. It's just like four characters and you know number letter number letter just floor and then general region. It might be um, just easier for reference. A lot of us kind of you play enough games with coordinates, you, right. you, you get very used to it. So I think it would um, be much easier to navigate because even with the, the our own room names, you still have to figure out what does that room name compare to for their room name where it is right. on the map. Uh, aside from that, also like the hotel room blocks. So during the um, the setup uh, when getting in the lottery. Many of the names, like, is there any association or anything listed into uh, what these room blocks are related to? Because the, there was a drop down for the Gaylord saying, like, which room group are you part of? But it's like, I have no idea what this reference is, what it's tied to. If there's, if it's just a generic, if you're going to be a party room, be here. 
so we can group people by noise? Or? Um, what we do there is that um, we have some people who will create room blocks so they can like, hey, you know, if me and my three friends mm -hmm. all get rooms, we can be, we can be together because it's like the Gaylord's huge. Mm -hmm. And to make it easier for, to, for both Merits and the Gaylord to be able to block people together, we had them submit that ahead of time and then turned it into a drop down that people could use on check-in. Um, so basically, because we do check, we do run those lists past the mm -hmm. block leaders. And so what we ended up, I mean, we can better note that because generally if, you, if you're not part of a room block or anything, you could just completely ignore that. But if you are part of a room block, then you'll want to click down, you know, you want to click down to see uh, who, uh, to, to, to click who you want to be with. No, absolutely. Uh, th th I would say if even um, anything adding to that too. So aside from the, the custom room blocks have some generic of, you know, you're not looking for a room block, but you're going to be noisy. So here's the noisy group. So we can just shove you into the corner of the, uh, of the hotel where we know that you're, you're going to be loud, but so will your neighbors. So we don't have to worry about room complaints, noise complaints, the usual. I mean, hell, it was so much worse in the Mark Center. So uh, at least here with the size, we can hopefully just keep that and then people can have their parties and their neighbors are partying too. let them all enjoy in one area um, other one uh, the mass consistency policy uh, I understand like yeah the, the state it's already finished up with that so I, I understand with the um, the convention that we were keeping it here I know AUSA w had a, a back and forth on that last minute as well back if was it a month or two ago where they said that they were going by state policy masks were no longer required, but optional. Um, but then the backlash from so many people in the community in terms of the, the anger and frustration came back where they're like, oh, no, 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 okay, masks required. So I'm... It should have been communicated the whole time that masks were required. Oh, it was. I, I'm just saying, like, I, I understand in, in their case it was this kind of backlash, mm -hmm. but um, whatever the, uh, the focus for this year, are we looking at potentially next year we can finally... Uh, We'll see. Uh, we'll see. I mean, yeah. we'll, we'll make that announcement, but certainly as Josiah made clear, you know, we do want to, I mean, once we make up our mind, then that's what it's going to be. Mm -hmm. Just so, like, if you don't want to wear a mask, you'll know that, okay, well, maybe I, w I don't want to buy a badge, but then people who do want to, who, who will only feel safe if masks are worn, mm -hmm. will know that, that we won't change our mind at the last minute. Uh -huh. So that will be... Um, uh, um, publicized before badge sales begin. No, I got you. Because uh, for one, like those of us with glasses, they are a giant pain in the butt, especially if you're trying to see things and go through the concerts and others. And for the other thing, uh, you guys forgot to uh, throw your masks on. So it's it's that type of thing where it's like, you know, um, uh, do as I say, not as I do at times, which just added to some frustration. And uh, although, I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to give you a hard time on that one. The big one, though, is some staff is very inconsistent. Some people went ballistic when they saw someone without a mask, and some people were just a little more laid back. So I feel like uh, it's understandable. We went through a pandemic, and everything was complete garbage. Um, but the hypochondria is still very much there, and... Uh, uh, it'd be nice to get back to normal at some point. So, yeah, I think we no, we, we we agree with you there. But also, I think part part of the reason that you may have seen some in inconsistency on the staff is because who here has not heard of a a, a story that hit the news oh, no, about somebody getting you know yelled at, fight with if you try to enforce a mask mandate. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah. I mean. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll hopefully be through this by next year. Yeah, one of our division heads actually, like, I won't call it like a fight, but got into an altercation where the attendee in question was belligerent and, like, got physical with the division head mm -hmm. when asked to put on a mask. It was, like, zero to 100. There was, like, no, yeah. no warning. So mm -hmm. some people are a little bit more twitchy about it. Um, on the comment about, like, us not wearing masks, I, I do want to make clear that our COVID policy says that performers and panelists are allowed to de-mask when they're on the stage because there is the, the distance. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, people should be wearing masks. And I, I, as one of the volunteer coordinators, are, am like very adamant about our volunteers enforcing that um, respectfully. Mm -hmm. um, so if you do have like a particular instance, instance um, even if you just have a description and a time and a place where it happened, like, hey, outside of 
the expo hall at this time, uh, someone with this description like screamed in my face and told me to put my mask on or I'll get thrown out. Like, like please send that information in. Um, the, the address that you'd want to use is stops, S-T-O-P-S, at magfest.org. Mm -hmm. I'll throw that up here too. Just stops at mag. Yeah, it, That's it for, for it staffing operations. Yeah, yeah. And it wasn't uh, personal experiences. It was more overheard or heard by you know, third party in terms of that was their experience. And so can't say too much to it, but um, I've seen enough of inconsistency with staff's behavior uh, times in the concert hall where we get past the entrance, we move as per one security guard indicated to away, and then 10 minutes later, we get another security guard physically pushing us, saying, oh, you're, you're still in a place, even though we've not moved at all. So a better indication of where is okay, where, where is not, rather than um, uh, communication lines getting crossed would yeah. be uh, better. Uh, and then I think last one on that is, I, I, like the game arrangement, I mean, I, I see how everything's getting laid out and shuffled around. VR's been shifted to a much larger space. Um, Horizon's still same spot. And, you know, with the board games outside, definitely um, increased a lot of room there. So I, I think just from there, the usual just optimization, best we can do to um, group everything within a similar theme so that people aren't trying to go from one corner of the convention to the other. Um, and maybe even arrangement of panels, if there's any way of getting any information ahead of time, uh, based on how many people are pouring from one panel into the next, you could kind of optimize that so rather than them flooding the hallway and going across the entire hotel, they, the, the ones that are getting a lot of um, overlapping traffic close to one another. Mm. I mean, that's, putting that together is gonna be a pain, but. Sure. Yeah. Anywho, right, thank you. Uh, thank you really so appreciate it, thank All you. All right, we've got about, less than 10 minutes left. So I'm gonna ask everyone that's in the line, please uh, try to keep your questions concise, just one or two statements, um, or like just like one or two things. Cool, um, first time MAGFest, lots of fun. Uh, I enjoyed it a lot. Um, there seems like there's a lot of like, I'm gonna call it like insider info about like uh, mad points and like the mascots. Like I, I don't even, I still don't know what the mascot this year was. I don't know where I like should have found that information. I saw like hints of it, like the charity auction and stuff, but maybe like somewhere on their website, maybe it's on there and I just didn't see it, but that kind of stuff is cool to know. Um, the locations of like water stations on the map, like to refill your water bottle and stuff. Um, I asked a couple of volunteers and they didn't really know, they like pointed me to another volunteer and stuff. So uh, in addition to that, maybe like giving like a small sheet of paper, like, hey, these are things you might get asked. Um, I'm gonna tell them myself here, but I actually cut my wristband um, so I could shower because I thought it was gonna like wash away or whatever. Um, I've seen at other conventions, they do like a cloth wristband, which is a lot more like, um, I guess, sustainable, not sustainable, but you know, um, so maybe exploring that. Um, for some of the tournaments, publishing the like bracket and like what match is going on, because I wanted to see like the final, but I had no idea like when that was gonna happen and stuff like that. And it was hard to get that information. Um, single day passes, if I don't think that was a thing, but um, I had some friends that like, couldn't come to the whole thing and they didn't want to pay for like, you know, four days of stuff but could only come on Saturday or whatever. So I think that would be really cool to explore. And then I just want to kind of, this was mentioned earlier, but the schedule stuff of like things not being open on the Thursday and ending early and stuff like that, like that wasn't really clear and stuff. The Sunday thing, like you mentioned, is kind of standard, but the Thursday, like stuff opening later in the day and stuff, like I didn't know that was going to be a thing. So overall, I really loved it. That was a lot of fun. Thank Great. you. I will say that was way more than one, one or two comments, but I uh, pr appreciate the feedback. Thank <laughs> he you. He was quick. Yeah, he was fast. <coughs> uh, yeah, so first MAGFest, but have been to other like larger cons before. Mm -hmm. um, overall MAGFest, a lot of fun. It's super weird, but also that's what <laughs> makes it really fun, at least mm -hmm. from my experience, um, having been to PAX West before where it's much more rigid. Um, the only complaint that I really had that hasn't necessarily been brought up is just some of the structure around the panels. Uh, for instance, the Magic Show panel, um, we, it took about 10 or 15 minutes for everybody to get seated of the hour time block where the magician was then rushed for what he was doing, the Who's Role Is It uh, panel that also took a little bit to get started and then they still did not necessarily have everything they needed at the beginning. So I think just in general, more structure around the panel so that you can bake in the more time to get things set up, maybe sit, pe have people seated during that setup time just to help with the overall flow. I'll say specifically whose role, 
it doesn't matter what we do. They will always be a, a, a lovable mess. Um, <laughs> but I, I appreciate that feedback. We'll, we'll make sure that's written down generally and pass along to our panelist <laughs> team. Hi, I've um, been going here for nine years. I've seen what 20,000 people looks like, I've, and I've seen what 10,000 of people look like. Um, <coughs> and I think the issue is the masks. I think you guys really need to reconsider next year's policy because it's, you know, you, you know, it's just a cloth on the mat, on the face, but it is inconvenient. The bands were really inconvenient as they just kept coming off. You can ask your staff at the pre-reg how many times they had to, you know, restrap someone. My friend had to go down three times. Um, but really, it's just the attendance. I think, you know, I don't want to see Magfest stagnate. Uh, I want to see it keep growing up. Um, so. And just comparing from other conventions too, like ones that are enforcing masks, I've seen their population kind of stagnate as well. Whereas Otakuthon, I only have one example, but Otakuthon from 20, uh, 2019 uh, was 25K, and in 2022, and they, they did not enforce masks, they actually grew to 29K. So I think there's something, and it's only one thing, one data, feed, but like, you know, there's something to be said there. Um, my only question, other question too is do you, how do you measure how many people feel unsafe about not enforcing masks? Uh, several times with poli um, surveys online. Surveys, yeah. Um, I'm sure there's a section in the attendee feedback survey, which I got a better link for. Okay. Bitly.ly slash mag23feedback. Um, yeah, I, I think at least our first year going into 2022. Um, yeah, I'm going to give we that a like, break. People were like overwhelmingly yeah. in support. <laughs> um, and then based on that feedback, uh, in addition to like the historical data of like, there's a big spike in January, and we know our dates are going to be when there's approximately a big spike. How big is it going to be? Is it going to be bigger than last year? Um, like I said, we, we did make the decision to be stricter on those requirements. Um, it's absolutely something we're going to think about moving forward, especially because okay. the spike this year was not nearly as bad as it was last year. Yeah. Basically, in order to have a consistent policy, we need to set it well in advance and communicate yeah. it. Yeah. But then that basically means we have to be more conservative, mm -hmm. unless we're certain like things might be better this year. We'll okay. See. We look at the numbers we have. Cool. Well, thank you. Thanks. Appreciate it. Straight to the point. Earlier, there was someone who mentioned the issue of tournaments not having descriptions in the uh, panel guidebook. Um, I want to second that and also add it's especially important when you have to bring your own game or controller. Uh, there were two things in a row that were Pokemon Puzzle League and Pokemon League Final Tournament. Pokemon Puzzle League, they had their own controllers and everything. Pokemon Tournament was actually in Pokemon and you had to bring your own system and all of that. And when I asked about the two of them at the info desk, they told me that both of them were for Puzzle League. And so I brought my game anyway, just in case. It turned out to be in Pokemon and I still couldn't participate because it turns out I had to have gotten badges earlier in the weekend, which I didn't know about. Um, so, like, having, like, requirements for, like, how to actually enter the tournament when there's other stuff like that, I think is especially important. Yeah, that, that's heard. I, yeah, I heard, I hear you on that. <clears throat> All right. Uh, this, this was also my, my own first MAGFest ever, really. Congrats. And, and I had a great time, warts and all. So I just wanted to take this opportunity to give a shout out to all the coordinators for the photo shoots on Friday and yesterday, especially for doing it in their own cosplays. Yeah. <clears throat> um, uh, <laughs> That's all I wrote, I guess. All right, thank you. The thank cosplayer you. photo and shoots were great. Yeah. yeah, be sure to tell yeah, them. I, be sure to tell them. At least someone said that. If if you can't tell them that I specifically said that. We'll do. Um, yeah, our cosplay department. Special is shout outs to the uh, cor to the coordinator with who was in who is doing a Lumine cosplay, mm. as in the Genshin Impact protagonist. Yeah, Thanks. hers or theirs was my favorite. Uh, mm. I don't know their pronouns, so I'm just going with they them. Thank you. Great, thank you so much. We appreciate yeah. it. So, so I'd say cosplay photo shoots probably. You were talking about Courtney Washington, who's our head of cosplay photo shoots. Um, yeah, um, but we'll make sure that, that, that your comments get back to her. Thank you. All right. 
All right, you ready? You're, it's, you're closing us out. Hey, Jerry. <laughs> Hello, Colette. Well, since Colette is recovering, I'll try to make it lighter for her to mm. have a speedy recovery. If she will. So, not that much. Actually, looking at the, uh, the I guess you can say, improvements you have done, which is actually substantial. I'm, fri- I'm afraid that many people don't want to get ca- feedback on that. I'll just run them down real quickly. I've seen that you have now put signs in places where they used to be to tell people where they are now new lo- newly located. That's actually a fantastic idea, and you should do that more often. I did see one sign that indicated not a computer museum, but something I thought of on lines of a MAGFest historical museum. Right. We accidentally made another sign for something we had there last year. So previously we had, um, like the history of MAGFest was that big banner that covered the inner walls of Chesapeake. And we didn't have that back this year, but we accidentally put the sign order in again. So we, we tried to take that down. but It's kind of ironic because it's the 20th anniversary. So what yeah. been great. Plus you maybe coordinate with the people who are running the, the MAGFest Lumberjacks or Woodman's panel, as well as that, they may be able to use that. Mm. In fact, hold a panel in that room. They can actually now have stuff always set up for them. That's another yeah. thing. The VR team I knew is new, but unfortunately they don't understand how to handle backpacks as well as a concert te- um, security team. They need to learn that because they unfortunately taught an empty bottle. Um, one of my soda bottles, which I use as a water bottle because concert throws that away sometimes, right. was just that throw it away. I had to dig it out of the trash in order to get back. And they had wipes, but they did not know that. So cr- that's best cross-knowledge transfer if you want to do it that way. Uh, I also noticed that I get Trying to see, yes, yes. For some reason, Jam Space and Jam Clinic were quite separated. And in fact, of course, as always, and I understand the limitations of locations, placed near panels. So they have to have issues with doors being closed and open. And then when you have the event there, which is sort of like the Gamer Fest and Game Over, kind of make difficult panels for that too. Mm-hmm. Uh, Another thing, though, I found out, actually, this is something I've noticed because I decided to do an experiment of coming to here during the Gaylord's holiday season. And I've noticed that, as with all of us in the travel industry, they have lost a substantial amount of, of their veteran staff. Yep. And that has shown when I actually went around and saw what the staff were doing, making a lot of basically amateur mistakes. But I expected that to be here, yet I did not see mm-hmm. much at all. So I got to say, Colette, whatever magic you did, to mask the, the unfortunate uh, recovery and healing phase that they had to do. Incredible. They, I did not have any much hotel issues in, in general at all. Oops. However, there is an issue with something that's out of the control, and that's the parking garage at the Gaylord. They do not indicate the actual mm-hmm. caveat of the in and out privileges if you get the early Thursday pass for four days in one shot. That is just first come, first serve. And if it's full, they'll let you in, but you're not getting a po- seat or a spot. So if you pay four days, and you lose your spot because you want to go out for lunch, tough luck. They should really clearly indicate that, though. That is an independent entity, I understand that, to the hotel team who will un- indicate maybe to you guys on the, st- on the actual page. I can see a lot of people getting upset about that. Okay, we, we did work fairly hard on our parking information page to sort of be clear that, like, while technically the Gaylord does have in-and-out privileges, that, that it does not get, they don't reserve a spot. Um, I do, we, I think we are going to push next year a little more for getting a little bit better information because the, the pre-payment this year was new. Well, okay, we announced it this year at least. They implemented it last year. Uh, but um, here, let's talk afterwards because I, ve- I am really struggling to, to understand what you're saying, so I do want to make sure I get that feedback yeah. correctly. Well, I'd like to end on an actually positive note. Your community orchestra, which I know you took months of planning on Discord, was a massive success. Yeah. And I'm wondering if the people who put it together have any plans to continue that in later years, maybe do some kind of, as community, not orchestra, but community band, just like you, you did with Jam Space, something where they now play in the atrium instead of in some closed area. Mm. That's what I want to say. Awesome. Thanks again. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah, and on that note, we are, um, I accidentally waved that guy off. I was going to talk to him afterwards, but he like ran away. Um, we are done. Uh, we got to close this room down because um, our AV teams are, are waiting to load up their trucks and stuff. I will say, anyone who made it this far, uh, I have, because I forgot to keep throwing them out, uh, a full stack of these lanyards. So if you want to grab one of these lanyards that says Super Magfest and has uh, an assortment of our characters um, from our, our 2020 event and beyond or backwards, uh, feel free to run up to the stage. But uh, otherwise, we'll... Talk to you all later. Have a have a have a great drive and home you, and uh, safe flights. And everyone. you can always put in feedback through our, the contact form on our website, 
Anytime, anytime you think of the end of anything. Here, I'm gonna come. I'm gonna put mask up and then come back down and make sure I get your feedback about the the parking. All right, thanks everyone. Thank you.